Hello and welcome to the Hard Questions. I'm Solomon Serwanza. On this episode, I host the president of the Uganda Medical Association, Dr. Oledo Samuel Odongo. His presidency is also contested in a similar manner because the association elected Dr. Naku Jolova, who was the vice president, as the president now. The chaos that is in the Uganda Medical Association is one to take a look at. We all remember the pictures of Dr. Oledo at Kololo alongside medical workers in medical uniform kneeling down to thank the president for his leadership, but most importantly, asking him to come and stand in 2026. These pictures made headlines and it became a very topical conversation. The Uganda Medical Association wasn't pleased with what their leader had done and they started a censor session. Now, the association also elected a new president. In this episode, we take a deep dive into that. Thank you so much for joining us. Dr. Oledo, it's such an honor to have you on the show today. I'm humbled, Solomon, and thank you so much. I'm honored to come to a beautiful studio, African Institute of uh, Investigative Journalism. This is a great work. Thank you very much, Dr. Oledo. Are you the president of the Uganda Medical Association? Matter of fact, they actually voted. They censored you out, voted in uh, Dr. Naku Jolova as the president. We have, you're saying you're the president. The association has another president. What's going on here? Thank you so much, Solomon. Uh, to begin with, I'm the president of Uganda Medical Association. When I became president, I was not uh, handpicked by a selected group of doctors. I campaigned fully and I was voted physically by over, physically by over 300 doctors, physically, and the rest were online because of COVID. So we had a selected number of people to select, to vote me in. And it was a tight competition because we were three doctors. And uh, I think the biggest challenge which has been there is I've tried to bring the people I've contested uh, with, to bring them on board, to work with me, always. But it seems the bitter loss has been persistent, even in the episode of my leadership, that some of them would wish to have any opportunity to say their negativity. So I want to alleviate the fear that as Uganda Medical Association, we are progressing, we are moving ahead to ensure that the medical fraternity is sound and objective. And we are working with government to ensure these things. So to answer the question, I'm still the president of Uganda Medical Association. Are you in office? Do you go to your office? I'm from office. Even yesterday I was in office. Do you chair the National Executive Committee? The constitution is clear. The president of Uganda Medical Association is the chair of the National Governing Council and is the chair of NEC. So whatever thing which was done out of probably bitterness of some people, which sort I don't understand, because Solomon, look, I want us to be a little bit objective in this. If you look at it objectively, when I was voted in as a president of doctors, I was given a mandate to lead an industry action on 6th of November. But I chose to have at least the entire November trying to look at how this industry action can be stopped because doctors, unlike other professions, when we strike, a patient dies. And that is the bitter truth. They might not die directly because of our absence, no. They might die because of someone who has been referred. And because of that little moment, your absence is a felt, what we call the golden hour, they may go. So my team of leaders, I convinced them at that time that, you know what, let's discuss with government at that time. But Government at that time never came on board. So we went for an instruction. The peak of it all, I led a team of doctors and health workers, nurses and uh, doctors who were in the field and SHOs. The person who was on my right was the SHO president, Dr. Asaf. We moved from Mulago up to CPS. We were going to the parliament. 
to show our dissatisfaction. We are wearing clinical coats. As we are wearing a clinical coat, and all these colleagues who are wearing clinical coats, we were arrested by police. We knelt down. I told them, kneel down so that police does not harm any of you as a sign of surrender and request not to harm or to hit any of us. At that time, Dr. Ledo kneeling in front of police, it wasn't an issue. Dr. Ledo kneeling in front of the fountain of honor on the 3rd of December to appreciate one, the great strides, the great strides in health. Because right now we have CT scans in all regional referral hospitals. So meaning every patient of head injury should not be transported to Kampala to Mulago. Two, to see that there's a revamp in the infrastructure of health facilities. Now, and the increase of salaries. You know, doctors are right now one of the greatest paid civil servants in Uganda. From 700,000 to 5 million shillings. So I had, because of my moral upbringing, that when something good happens, you must appreciate, I had to kneel in front of the fountain of honor as Dr. Ledo with a team of colleagues that asked to come with me to appreciate the fountain of honor. And in that, because I appreciate uh, the great leadership of General Yuri Kagutam 7, and I've never hidden my affiliation to the NRM. I've never hidden that. Even when I came as a president of doctors, it was clear that Dr. Ledo is affiliated to the NRM. So at that time, it was an NRM activity. So at that time, I asked my party president, my party chair, because of the great strides and the, my virtues of Christianity, which tells me that if someone follows the virtues of Christianity, and to me, the touching mark was when the fountain of honor made a stand and he said the issue of homosexuality himself, he will not be part of, and he, he, re, he refuted it, he said he will not be part of homosexuality being advocated in the country. That alone spoke volumes to my salvation. I asked him as an individual, Your Excellency, General Kagodam 7, please come and lead us for the next five years. And now on the camera, I'm even requesting him to come and lead us for the next 10 years, if he still has the, final, if he still has the muscle, which he has. Dr. Ledo, we, we're going to take a deep dive into that, but it is important for us because a lot of the conversations that happened what was at the epitome, and we'll get back to that. I, I had asked you a simple question. Are you still the member or are you still the president of the Uganda Medical Association? And you said yes. And I asked, do you chair the National Executive Committee, which is the second highest, and do you also chair the other council, which you talked to, which you, you talked to me about? Yes. Do you, do, are you chairing those committees? Because I know for sure that there were committees that sat last week for NEC, and you did not chair them. There was a chair, that is Dr. Naku, who was chairing those sessions. Even this week, the, the National Executive Council Committee is also sitting. So I, I, I wanted to set the record straight. Are you still the president of the Uganda Medical Association? And do you do your job as the president or you are not the president of the Uganda Medical Association? What court said was the status quo remains. There is confusion within the U Uganda Medical Association. Now, at the time, the status quo was that Dr. Naku had been elected as the, after they had censored you. And then you're saying you are the president of the Uganda Medical Association. Can I Put answer you, Solomon? Straight. One, to begin with, I think people have failed to understand the court ruling. And it is painful that Solomon, you're also interpreting it wrongly. Because the status quo was as in before activities when they were served, when Uganda Medical Association was served with a letter to appear in court. And the letter was served before 8th. That was a Friday. And the issue was meant to be heard on a, ma on, on a Monday. And it meant that whatever issues that were existing before being served the letter, Maintain, uh, maintained a status quo. And before the letter was served, that Friday, I was still president. And this 
hurrying, running around of the people who claim that I beat them hands on straight, who selected a few individuals, less than 30 people. And by the way, they did it on a Sunday when they were served the letter on a Friday. So which status quo do you think what meant? That is food for thought for you. But to be clear, as a president, I'm always deputized. I'm deputized by Dr. Edith Naku, who has been a very good lady, by the way. To be clear, one is we have a good working relationship with my vice. By the way, when I was arrested last year by the unfolding of events when I was advocating for the salary announcement of not only doctors, health workers cross board. When I was arrested with the team, the person who, who ensured that we were released is my VP. So to me, I hold that in highest esteem. Two, I was assigned. When I met the president with, my, with the team of leaders of doctors, I requested him. Because this is not about Oledo, no. This is about what is important for the medical fraternity. We requested him that he looks into the issue of doctors who had died because of Ebola and COVID-19 and sponsor those children. So the Fountain of Honor assigned me a responsibility to go and identify these children countrywide. I moved to their homes, checking one by one. And Solomon, this is a letter. Dr. Ledo, I, that, I, I, want, I want to show I, you. I, I also have that on, yes. on our discussion, but I just wanted, first of all, clear the I, issue. I want to show, I want to clear I, this. I, I just wanted to get to, 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 to clear the thing that, so are you then saying that Dr. Naku is chairing Nick on your behalf as the vice? Absolutely, absolutely. Dr. Edith Naku is chairing on my behalf because I de I'm deputized, I give responsibilities and assignments to my deputy. All right, thank, thank you. Thank, thank you for setting the record straight. We, we, we now get to, because first of all, we wanted to establish what's going on here. We hear two sitting presidents, you and then your, 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 your Dr. Edith Naku, uh, and, 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 and it's just so many things happening there. But if here is the moment that many doctors were agitated when Dr. Ledo led a team of medical workers to Kololo and they knelt and prostrated before the president and asked him to stand in 2026. Take a look. <laughs> Your Excellency, Wobare, Otimusisa, Nega to Kamarize, Natuku Saba, Kumazuigazi. Your Excellency, for two assassins in Gabasau, two Sobola, two assassins in Gamayo Gaina, two assassins in Tibulichimacha Tagiza, Ochina. Your Excellency, to Yame, Nadiri Mukaga, Okuma, Okuma, Mosu, Ossetia, and Natuja. Dr. Ledo, let's get to that. And it's important for us to understand the build-up to how you actually took these people to Kololo. You came before Nick and asked, tabled this issue that there's an opportunity to meet the president and that you are, you are going to present the needs of the doctors to him. What I gather from Nick is that people said that this looked like more of a political issue for your own personal gain, rather than a collective, um, this, a, a collective move for the association to present their issues. And according to Nick, they said they will not be party to it. You continued to organize doctors and medical students and went against the decision of Nick, and you went to Kololo. Indeed, what we saw in Kololo, even I have managed to speak to some of the doctors, said they were surprised when you told them, let's all go down. So let's, let's look at the build-up of that event. Before, before you came to Kololo, these were conversations that were happening at the Uganda Medical Association offices. Take us through that. Thank you so much, Solomon. To begin with, uh, I'm born again. And scripture says, my people perish because of lack of vision. When you come in as a leader, you're a vision bearer of the team that is under your custody. And as a vision bearer, 
I understood that the modus operandi of industrial actions repeatedly was setting a very dangerous precedence. Because the truth of the matter is, we had and we still have a goodwill from the government because of the natural love they have for us. Solomon, even if you have a child that you love so much, but when a child continuously becomes in discipline, in discipline, as a father, you reach a moment and you get fed up. You get a whip and you came. And as I talk today, that whip is happening to us. The instruction which was led by the SHOs that I advised my colleagues not to go for because there were other means of resolving. We had set a pace, a foundation of dialogue and discussion. Right now we have SHOs who are under sponsorship of Ministry of Health being removed on the payroll of SHOs. And yet these SHOs are medical officers who are in a heart rich facilities who were identified in the communities they were in to go back for further training so that they can come back and offer a specialized care in those communities. Now, they are, we, we, we are at the verge of losing them from the training because the little SHO enhancement they were getting was sustaining not only them but their families. So there was a bigger picture. So as Dr. Ledo, when I came into office, I realized that we need to bridge the gap. We need to have another approach onto these issues to better the medical fraternity. As, and I repeat this, as health workers, when we go for instruction, it is not metals that break. It is not cars that get malfunctioned. It is not computers that crash. It is not paperwork that is not submitted. It is life which is at stake. But that is the decision of the association. Solomon, Solomon, let me build this because you wanted me to explain this. Yes. So now, you realize that as we had achieved the one thing, the salary enhancement, we had like over four pending issues that even the fountain of honor had hinted to. And we needed to build up this because we need to sanitize the system, the bad blood which was there between Uganda Medical Association, doctors, health workers, and the government that it is about a bitter exchange of blows. I have to fight you to get this. And as a leader, I wanted love to come. I wanted us to bridge this with love so that we can have now objective discussion without emotions flaring up, without having to put one or the other in a corner. It's the reason why, actually, when there was an opportunity, when there was an NRM youth symposium, I was invited as an NRM kada, who is a youth, for the NRM symposium in Ikololo of the third I extended the invitation to colleagues in Uganda Medical Association. I did not extend as neck, please neck, come and escort me, no. I gave them an open inv invitation to come and attend. And I told them clearly that I am going to present the issues of doctors, health workers that are still pending. Health workers across the board. Because if you look at the issue of requesting for state house scholarship, for the doctors and health workers who died. It is not only doctors that the fountain of honor honored. It is all health workers, nurses who died, and painfully, even there is a cleaner who was cleaning in one of the wards who contracted COVID and died. We have two kids she left behind. And I had to add down the list because it was a bigger picture. The 3,000 unemployed doctors, you're not going to untwist governments, and. You're not going to untwist government and have them employed. You're not going to fight them and say, no, 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 you must employ these guys. We are tired of sowing a seed to the young generation, our colleagues in the medical school, the young doctors, that you know what, if you want to achieve anything, fight. We are tired of that. And yet we are a honorable profession, which is meant to sit and discuss. So I'd br I wanted to bring a different trend. And I'm glad, by the way, this different trend of dialogue, discussion, is taking us strides. So when you, when you brought this issue, you just extended um, an invitation to members of the association, not through NEC. I extended the invitation to all members of the association, all. Not only the members of the NEC. But, and by the way, so you did this as the president of the association. Solomon, let me explain this very well. This invitation was not only extended to doctors alone, no. I extended the same invitation to pharmacists, 
By the end, that team that knelt in front of the fountain of honor, we had about seven pharmacists. Pharmacists, two of them are doing their masters in clinical pharmacology. And the reason was, right now, the last employed pharmacist in the, the normal government systems about 15 years ago. And yet we have the issue of the last mile of drugs. Drugs being sent to your center for disappearing. Solomon, you've done this story. Other people trying to steal off drugs. So we looked at who are the people who are missing in the link. And that's why we requested the founder of to have district pharmacists. A district pharmacist would go a long way looking at what we have, what we don't have, how has it gone, how has it been used, and being rotational. We have over 100 districts in the country. So it was a big holistic approach. I extended the same invitation to the nurses. We had nurses on board. I'm not a present for nurses. I'm not a present for pharmacists. I extended this even to clinic officers. We had clinic officers on board. We had uh, a, a light of Medical professionals students. on board. You get it? So it wasn't an issue of Uganda Medical Association that was extended to. No, it was open. And I told them, if, it, if you look at the speech I made, it wasn't purely talking about Uganda Medical Association. It is broad. It is talking about pharmacists being deployed in the district as district pharmacists. Am I a pharmacist? You get the point? Having community nurses deployed, because we have nursing officers who are done with nursing. We have interns right now who are finishing bachelors of nursing and doing internship. Right now we don't have that job description. People who have done bachelors of nursing, they get done, they come out, and they sit. Yet, they are meant to be community nurses. They've learned an extra component of disease prevention. They are meant to be helping us to instill disease prevention in the community. And now, lastly, that over 2,000 doctors, that, that approach was to help them to have the implementation that the president had talked about before, having a doctor in your center three to facilitate the second arm prevention so that cure can be supported by prevention to have less people going to hospitals for treatment to reduce the numbers so those could not be achieved dr ledo then you led a team of 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 medical students and you said there were some doctors members of the association and nurses and you went to kololo you looked at from what I'm gathering from you, you looked at this as an opportunity to actually get the president's attention and present issues of medical workers. And indeed, at that time, you were there as also the president of the Uganda Medical Association, right? For this, we have been reliably informed that you were working closely with the, with, with the Honorable Evelyn Anite to actually get this attention. Is this true? I'm failing to understand what he said. My question is, this was more of a political event, right? It's an NRM event, like you said, NRM event, right? Yes. And you came for that event as also the president of the Uganda Medical Association. That is why you did not speak as an NRM youth. You rather spoke strongly about issues of doctors, right? Yeah, Solomon, let me answer. Can I answer? Thank you. Now, Solomon, it is clear, my being president of doctors, my history, my track, my track record is clear. I'm sure you've looked through the videos of my affiliation to the NRM right from way back. I contested against the late right Honorable Jacob Olanya, may he so rest in internal peace, for regional vice NRM, Northern Uganda. That was NRM. My videos were on YouTube, they were on Facebook, Twitter, every social handle. And later, the position of president of Uganda Medical Association fell vacant because of the team which was there having finished that term. I came, presented myself to the doctors, and I told doctors clearly, me, I'm NRM. You've seen me contest. So NRM activities which are going to help to consolidate the relationship between doctors, health workers, and the government I'll be pro them. I was clear even in my manifesto. Read through my manifesto. Point number four is talking about connecting the medical fraternity to the government to have a holistic approach. It is number four. So that alone, being an NRM activity, which was the, the NRM symposium of third 
me being NRM, and I was invited as NRM, and also going there, the title of the president does not get off my shoulder. But the people that came with me, you will have medical interns who are there, some of them, it is true. We had pharmacists, true. We had nurses, true. We had some medical students, true. We had a lady of professionals. Now, it is in the same category of a group which knelt still in front of the police when I moved from Murago to look at the issues of the welfare being improved. And, and you were saying that they knelt before the police as a sign of surrender, that you're not harmful. And therefore, the police wouldn't beat them or do anything to them. That's the reason. So you get to Kololo, and the medical workers behind you, you lead them, and you say, let us all kneel down and, uh, you know, prostrate before the president and say thank you. And then you said, Your Excellency, I ask you to stand in 2026. This is a political conversation, and you're bringing issues of medical workers to a political event for NRM youth and taking that opportunity as a leader of an association and on behalf of all the medical workers who are kneeling down, you say the president is so strong, is everything, is able, his heart beat, everything, and you're asking him with the people in medical uniform to come and stand in 2026. That is missing or mixing a professional body into the body politics of the NRM, and that's being partisan. Thank you so much. The Uganda Medical Association does not, it's, it's an independent association that looks at pushing for the welfare of the medical workers. And yet you, sir, knelt before the president and asked him to come and ordered everyone who was behind you to kneel and asked him to stand in 2026. Solomon, thank you so much. To begin with, I still ordered and asked everyone who was with me in front of the police to kneel. Everyone knelt. And the message that I told the police, you didn't get it. I asked the police not to harm any of us and to understand that what we are advocating for is for the betterment of the health sector. Police was humble enough to hold us there to bring a double cabin to throw us on and to be taken for custody. At that time, I ordered everyone to say the same thing. Two, in Kololo, I asked my colleagues who had come with me to kneel, to appreciate the fountain of honor for what he had done. And two, to also, because there is nothing not true about what I said about the fountain of honor. Solomon, the honest truth is, the fountain of honor is more fit than you and me combined. That's the honest truth. The distance is it can walk. Solomon, me and you, we might not be able to walk because of the modernization, the kind of nature of work we do. Because we either have to be in a border border, eat a taxi, or you drive. So the sedentary lifestyle we've led as in a way consumed our physique, but it is contrary on the fountain of honor, is absolutely fit. And I told you my reasons for requesting him to contest. And one of the things, by the way, in the kneeling that people claim was so bad and all that, it bridged the gap between the health workers and the government. And to give you an example, Solomon, we have over 86 colleagues. Me have moved in this country to look at those colleagues who are passed on. Over 86 colleagues who died because of Ebola. Dr. Ali Muhammad, a Tanzanian, who left us two children that we are taking care of, died and his body is buried in Fort Porto because of Ebola. These children, their only hope were their family, their parents. By the way, the most painful thing is, Solomon, if I died, my family forgets about any support. These children, others were studying in Kampala schools, now they're in villages. Doctor, I've gone in. Now, let me, let me clarify. One of the greatest fruits of this is the over 120. It is here. This, I submitted it to State House. The list that the Fountain of Honor asked me to give out. But painfully, even now, even when I submitted the list, other people are trying to sabotage these children, these innocent children, to get a future. These innocent children to get a living. Solomon, this breaks my heart. I speak this with a heavy heart. I am sorry for breaking down. I've gone 
to see these children from their homes. It is painful for when you're working, when you're giving everything you have for a country, then you die while giving this service. Your children, the only children you have, they go back to the villages. No one having any hope to help them. I've moved in the families of these kids. You find a child hopeless, not going to school. Solomon, I had to pick even my own money. There is one I've been paying for, for two good years. Because the father and mother died in the episode of Ebola and COVID-19. Now, these kids are absolutely innocent. This could have been any of my kids. They don't have a future. So what is the purpose of being a president of doctors when my brothers and sisters are lying down in the grave, dead, and their children, I cannot add any value to the future of their children. What's the value of my being president? So I have moved countrywide to look for these children, and I'm busy here requesting whoever is blocking the future of these kids, please have mass upon these children. Because the, the founder of Ona spoke and said, submit these names. I've submitted them to all offices. But these kids are still being tossed. They have not included them on set of scholarship. Have mercy upon humanity. I don't do these things because they benefit me. No. So when I don't have a child whom I'm meant to, to pay for, on the list there's none of my children on this list. But I don't have any. I've not yet married. So now, if my colleagues in the grave, their children can get a future, I will rest peaceful. It is not about being a president of doctors. It's about what can we do to better the system. And you think, and you think, kneeling, and you think kneeling before the president has, has brought you those results? Solomon, I'm sorry for the breaking down. But you know, some of us are human in every aspect of life. So when, 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 when I break down, I'm not breaking down because I'm remorseful. I'm breaking down because I know. I've, I remember the situation where I found these kids in. And my kneeling down, if that kneeling down is going to grant these kids a future, so be it. I celebrate Christ. If my kneeling down is going to remove doctors, the over 3,000 doctors unemployed on the street, and they're going to be taken on voluntary service for one year and later deployed in your center three and their center four, so be it. If my kneeling is going to increase the number of district pharmacists so that this last mile of stealing of drugs is no more, so be it. My presidency is for a season to damn the president of doctors. Tomorrow another person is going to come. My term expires in November. But the question is, what mark have I left? What have I done? Well, have I caused more damage as the president of doctors? Or I have improved the system? So Solomon, this is no longer about Oledo. No, it's no longer about who is Uganda Medical Association. No, it's about the bigger picture. Where do we want the health sector to go? Dr. Ledo, some people think that you disgrace the fraternity and the, of, of medical workers by you kneeling down before a head of state and also asking him to stand. That, to some, was a disgrace to a profession that many respect, especially that the association does not work on political parties and politics. Solomon, where is nobility? Where is nobility when the people who study to save lives are not given jobs, they are not employed? Where is nobility when a doctor who is giving a service, when he falls sick, he cannot even get the money to, or he cannot attain the service he offers? Do you know we've lost doctors because of illnesses that they could easily be managed, but they could not be, they are not on any insurance? Nurses have died, they're not on any insurance. We fall sick, we treat ourselves, we don't have any treatment package, no insurance. What is nobility? When the service you offer, when you badly need it, at the time you need it, you cannot attain it. Where is nobility? When, when you die and you've given every bit of you 
to give to, to give service back to the community your children cannot be remembered they cannot get a future that they would have got so what is no, where is nobility where is the nobility sincerely so if kneeling Asking the fountain of honor to come back 2026 20, is going to open these doors for these children, open doors for health workers to get into health insurance, open doors for health workers who are training now and who have been in the field without jobs to get jobs. I will even kneel again. That I repeat it. I will even kneel again. Because it's not about Oledo. Because I know there's a narrative going around that Oledo did it for selfish interest. What interest did I have? What have I gained from this? Nothing. It is bigger than Solomon. There's the reason why you were created on us. There's the reason why God allowed you to exist on us. That one thing that God allowed you to exist for, that thing, if you realize it and you do it, you're satisfied. Trust me, my being a present of doctors, it was not just by accident. God predestined it. So if God put me as a present of doctors at such a time, when my colleagues would be dead and their children would get a future through my being a president, I celebrate Christ for it. Dr. Ledo, as simple as that I do. Dr. Ledo, let, let, let's talk about the issue of you on record after the court gave you an injunction upholding you as the, the, the president of the Uganda Medical Association at that time. You addressed the press and you said, I will fight anyone who is using the opposition within the association to frustrate the interests of the association. Clearly, this is politics to it. You speak to the opposition in, within the party, you're on record to say this, and yet you're saying you're all out there for the association and, you know, and, and, and you, you're going to fight anyone to your last breath, you said at a press, at a press conference, well attended. Aren't you shooting yourself in the foot? Solomon, to, begin, to, to, to answer your question, uh, to us in Uganda Medical Association, that boat sailed a long way. We went into reconciliation, we went into harmonization, we went on to dialogue. Because it was a bigger picture than Oledo. Oledo is personality today. Tomorrow Oledo is no more. The association will always remain. It's the reason why I reached out to every affected individual, every doctor who felt affected, I reached out to them and asked them to sit down with my team so that we can have harmony and love back. Not looking at the event of who is who. At that time, a lot of emotions flared. At that time, all of us. So do you want to apologize? Are you, was that out of a, apology? A moment, a moment, Solomon, a moment, Solomon. This is not about this word and the other word. It's not about apology, this apology, that. No, I'm not apologetic for asking the fountain of honor to come back. No, because those are the virtues I have. I am an RM guy and I'm born again. Those are the virtues I have. That one has no, no. question about it. I just wanted to move on to something that has also left um, some divisions, and that's the appointment of a member from the Uganda Medical Association on the board of the National Drug Authority. That there's a letter from the Ministry of, of Health asking the association to be clear because they have two nominations. They have you and they also have um, Dr. Bukwekwaru. Um, there are sources who are telling me that you nominated yourself to sit on the board. There are also sources that are telling me that the Uganda Medical Association sat down, went through the Electro College and Electro System to actually nominate Dr. Bukwe Kwaru as a member of the Uganda Drug, the National Drug Authority. And people felt like you were being selfish and you did not have the interest of association to follow the protocol and the system of, of appointment. Solomon, can I answer? Can I answer? Thank you so much. <clears throat> now to begin with, I think now you understand when such things happen, you understand that I'm still president. Because if I wasn't president, I wouldn't think whatever I would write or recommend would matter, would it? But you have, you have access to the head, letter heads, you have everything, so you can just write yourself, I nominate myself to sit on the board. And Solomon, the Solomon, Solomon, if you claim I am, I am not the president, as it is put by some few people, if I wrote a letter to Minister of Health, why would the Minister of Health 
honor me in my writing if I'm not the rightful president. Minister of Health knows the Constitution of Uganda Medical Association. It is clear. The mandate of appointment on statutory boards from Uganda Medical Association lies as a prerogative of the president of Uganda Medical Association. That is the mandate on the constitution, from the constitution. The mandate of appointment is a prerogative. And history will bear us right that right from our mother, the late Margaret Mungereda, actually Margaret Mungereda sat on every board. Every board. She was on, on NDA, she was on, uh, on every board. She, was, she went through the electoral system. Listen, let me, let me explain to you. Because of our constitution, even at that time, was the president represents on every board. And it is his prerogative to choose who to represent him or her. Not to go through the electoral college. Not to go through the electoral college. It is not there in our constitution. Not to go to the electoral college. It is not there. So, at the time of Margaret Mungera, she felt it wise that for her, she would appoint people. She appointed others. She sat on others. And then she appointed others. Okay? Now, Dr. Dr. Ken, Kenya Mugisha came in. He also did the same thing. Because it was into his mandate as the president at the time to do that. So later on, there came Dr. Biso, the ENT surgeon. So when he came in also, he did the same thing. I appointed others, and others he seconded to go. So now, when the term of Dr. Ekwaro Buku came and said, you know what, guys, I cannot represent on every board as the president. I'm requesting NEC. Yes? Gentlemen understanding that my power of nominating people on such way boards, let me now disseminate it, release it to us having an NGC meeting and then giving people opportunity to show interest. Because I feel, to me, it is my best option. He was a president. He chose what he did. It was not documented constitutionally because it was not voted for. We remain with the clause of the president having the prerogative of representing or choosing a representative. There came the leadership of Dr. Bis, Dr. Uh, Idro, that I took over from. Dr. Idro did the same. He copied from his predecessor. He copied from Dr. Oboku, what Dr. Oboku did. Now, when I came on board, me, I married all the leaders. I realized that we can have Kasavu Kanyama. I appointed the Secretary General on the board of Beida, single-handedly as a president. I wrote a letter, followed the constitution, wrote a letter, sent the Secretary General, Dr. Herbert Ruswata, to Beida Children Foundation to be the representative of Uganda Medical Association. He never went into any voting. He was not voted by NEC, no. He was not voted by NGC, and by the way, I just informed NEC because it is my prerogative as a president. That is clear. So now, when the NDA thing came in, I realized that because I needed to know who was objective and ready for this at that time. Dr. Kwarobuk was out of the country, by the way. He never contacted me. The letter came to me, and I sent a copy to the office, made my secretary general access it, and told him, try to identify people who could be having interest. But now, every other thing, went behind my back into appointing this, appointing this. I was like, no, this is a very critical and sensitive area. That requires objective thinking. We've sent some people in different boards, and the people have forgotten about their responsibilities. Even the previous person we sent to NDA never wrote even any report, never even informed NEC of any dealings for the three, for the four years the person was there. So you appointed so, yourself. We were, I, I was a little bit disappointed in the kind of character and qualities of the people whom I was sending there. It's the reason why in Baila I sent the Secretary General. I believe in him. I believe in Ruswata. I've worked with Ruswata. I know his capabilities. That's why I recommended and sent him to Baila. So the issue of NDA, it was, it was one of the areas that are critical for us. And we needed our direct eye as human neck into the NDA. It's the reason why I recommended myself as I recommended the Secretary General, so that information there is lurid and the agenda and the interests of the association are put into consideration. Dr. Ledo, what do you want to be remembered for um, after November, if you're to complete your term? What do you want to be remembered for as the president of the Uganda 
uh, Medical Association. One, every doctor, every nurse, every clinical officer, every medic who goes on the ATM to withdraw money at the end of every month remembers me. That one is obvious. That's directed. He remembers me. A nursing officer, a nurse certificate to move from 600,000 to 1.6 million. When she goes and counts more than a million of what she was getting, she remembers only one name. God protect Dr. Oledo. Or oh, you'll be remembered as a, a, a president who knelt in front of a president and asked him to come in 2026. That is also another thing I want to be remembered for. Solomon, I'm proud of it. That I knelt in front of the only president of a country. Do you know that there's only one president in a country? Even me, I'm a small president. Me, I'm a small president of association. There's only one man, the commander in chief. There's only one man who is the fountain of a nation. I was even shocked. I watched a video when uh, the leader of National Unity Platform, uh, Honorable Chagulani Bobby White, confessed on the camera that General Kaguta Museven is the president of the Republic of Uganda. Now, if the opposition leader is accepting that General Kaguta Museven is the president, now me, why wouldn't I accept? Dr. Oledo Samuel Odongo, thank you so much for speaking to us. Well, I have been speaking uh, to Dr. Oledo Samuel Odongo. He still says he's the president of the Uganda Medical Association. I'm Solomon Serwanja, and this is the hard questions. <laughs>